men right now and, and go home. We've been we've been blessed in many ways. Our kids have touched our lives. We've, we've had the gospel preached to us already in song. We come to this day, but you never let a preacher. A preacher's not going to leave if he gets no <laughs> so We're not going to do that. We're not going home early, Glenn. But this Sunday is quite a day for Palm Sunday and for preachers, you kind of have to work it all in. Either you're going to have Palm Sunday or you're going to get him crucified or whatever. And we just, we kind of rush it in. But I'm going to give you just a, a quick synopsis of, of where we're going and what's taking place. And if you can imagine the crowds, the excitement and, and all that they heard about Jesus, this, this man coming and people were flocking to him and the streets of Jerusalem were getting crowded and the people were thinking so highly of this man. They were just, they, they, they wanted to put palm branches down. They were putting their cloaks down on the ground. They didn't even want the donkey he was riding to touch the ground. The people were just hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna. They were so proud, so, so gratified that the king... King was coming. He was coming into their midst. And after that, a little bit of things began kind of going downhill. The religious rulers had it out to kill him. We had to get rid of this guy. He's messing up everything we've got. He's teaching this love and forgiveness, and he's just he's ruining it. We've got to get rid of him. They plotted with one of the disciples. Judas was going to betray him. Judas was going to give him away in Kidron Valley. Remember, Jesus walked up and the, the soldiers and all began to come. And Judas walked up and kissed him and gave it away. And I could imagine Jesus saying as he was coming up, Judas, you don't have to do this. But Judas did it. The kiss. Jesus didn't run. No attempts to get away whatsoever. He walked up and asked, who are you looking for? He said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazarene. He said, here I am. Here I am. And they took him. Took him to the trial. Couldn't find anything wrong with him. A couple of guys blasphemed him. I called him a blasphemer. He was going to tear down the temple and build it again in three days. And, you know, they were telling lies about him. And finally it got to the point where high priest just washed his hands and said, I, I can't do anything with it. If he's the one y'all want, y'all take him. And they took him and led him down the street. In that day and time, they made examples of criminals. They did everything they could to deter anyone who went against the authority. So they led him toward Golgotha, but the only thing is they led him down the winding streets the long way. People began to spit at him, call him names. Finally, they walked up that hill to Golgotha, the place of the skull. And they had the I-beams there, and they, they laid him out on one of those what I would think of it looked like a big cross ties, but big timbers. They stretched out that hand. And there was one big, I'm sure, just a big burly looking old soldier. Took that nail and drove it in that arm, into that wrist. They pulled the other one over. They drove it in there. Did the same thing with his feet. And then they took it and, and, and just dropped it in a hole. You ever dig a big corner post, Matt? You ever dig a big hole for a cross tie? 
you take that cross tied up to the edge of that hole, and then you pick it up enough to where it'll clear, and you take it over and drop it. You don't let it down in there easy, you drop it. If you can imagine when you hit the bottom of that hole, all of a sudden the surge. Mark said he was crucified about the third hour. That was about 9 a.m. in the morning. He said he died about the ninth hour, which was about 3 p.m. that afternoon. Can you imagine lying and all of that? And all of that pain and agony. The story says there were two thieves that were crucified beside him. One of them railed at him. And one of them said something to the effect, I know who you are. You are the Son of God. You remember what Jesus told him that day? You will see me in paradise. That day you will be with me in paradise. Acknowledging who he was. Thou art the Christ. We come to the last moments, last little bit of Jesus' life. I'm in John 19 and about verse 28. <laughs> Later, knowing that all was now complete and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up the Spirit. This is God's Word for God's people. Thank you. Thank you. What is it? What is it? We see Jesus on that cross, and there's a moment when Jesus realized that God had turned his back upon him. It was at that moment that the sins of the world were put upon Jesus' body, upon Jesus himself. You remember what Jesus said in one of the scriptures, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At that moment, Jesus knew God had turned his back. You see, it was at that moment that your sins and my sins were put upon the cross. We weren't even there, but the sins of the people were put upon the cross. And Jesus died for your sins and my sins. Amen. Jesus died for the sins of the one who is in prison. Jesus died for the sins of the most vile individual. Jesus died for the sins of the ones who would never acknowledge him. Their sins were put upon his life. Even though they may never call his name. Jesus said, it is finished. In the English, that's three words. In the Greek, it's tetelestai. Tetelestai. It is finished. You know, that's what Ryan may have said when she got through <laughs> blowing that horn. When she got through, I could hear her say, to tell us to <laughs> It's finished. It's over. It's done. <laughs> it's complete. The job that you gave me is done. I finished it. To tell us to I, it is finished. I can imagine the farmer years and years ago 
Ronnie, maybe your dad or something like that would be plowing the fields of that old mule in front. Plowing those fields, getting those fields ready to plant. And take days maybe with that plow and that mule working from daylight till dark. And finally get that field completely plowed. You can just almost see them just sit down on that old stump over there on the side and say, it's finished. I've done it. That's the way Jesus was. What God had asked him to do, it is finished. To tell SDI was a word that these people at that day and time could understand. They, they knew what that meant. That was used on documents to, to show that this contract, this agreement was made complete. It was written on there or it was stamped. However they, however they put it on that document. It was showing that had been done. That debt had been paid. You borrowed something from someone and it was you paid it back. Then that means that debt is completed. It was stamped to tell us they are. Jesus knew those people understood that a debt had been paid. And he had paid it. Amen. It is finished. It's over. What is it? What is it? Forgiveness. It is the redemption of our sins. Perfect the perfect sacrifice. Come on. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Go ahead. Eternal it. life. Ma'am? Forgiveness so that we can have eternal life if we choose to accept. What more? <clears throat> that is it. Your forgiveness, your redemption, your promise of eternal life, it is finished. The contract is done. The field is plowed. It is over. There is no more. There will be no more it's. It's about knowing Jesus, knowing who He is, and realizing that He was your perfect sacrifice. Amen. Christ. He was the Lamb of God. He is, the Lamb. he is. Thank you, my wife is is always right there with me. Grace poured out Having on the cross. Grace poured. Jesus is the one. There is there will be no other sacrifice. There will be no other initiation. There will be no other way to enter. That is it. Jesus, acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. That's it. That's it. There's nobody else we can go to. No. Nobody. Sometimes we can't fix it, can we? Sometimes we can't handle it. Jesus Christ is the answer to whatever your question is. It's about Jesus Christ. There are programs like this recovery that Dan was talking about earlier. There are programs in AA. There are programs in, in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and all this other. And do you know where they all lead to? Help me, Dan. Christ. Christ. All of these programs, all of these books that you're reading to, to self-help, to better you, to, to help you get by in life, to, to help you... Get a do-over. <coughs> they all lead to Christ. It doesn't matter what the question is. The answer it is doesn't the matter what your question is. The answer is the same. Jesus Christ. Yes. You can learn that as a little child. Jesus will accept you as a little child. Jesus will accept you as a grown adult who thinks he knows everything. But he's ready to hit his knees and acknowledge Christ is the King. That's it. That's it. This is a this is a day sometimes when we think about that sacrifice and what someone did for you. The blood that was shed for you, you and me. I want you to come back next week. And we're going to
going to find out the end of the story. It's not just a cross. It's a stone. It's a stone. God had a plan. God started that plan a long time ago. And that plan is including you and I. And now it's what do we do with it. If you've never known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, <coughs> maybe you've been going to church, maybe you've been going to this church, maybe you've been going to any church, and you may have been a member for 50 years. There's an old saying I heard a long time ago. You know what it is? Just put your boots in the oven, don't make them biscuits. <laughs> Just going. That Dan's confused. <laughs> See, they were fixing to get out of here now, Dan. We're going to be here in 15 minutes. <laughs> Just, just sitting in a pew don't make you a Christian. Amen. Just sleeping in a garage don't make you a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it about? Where's Sarah? Relationship. There you go. Yeah. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. It's not about what church you attend. It's not about how long you've been a member. It's not about your pins that you used to get for Sunday school attendance and all that. It's about acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's what it's about. The thief said it on the pew. Jesus said it that day. You'll be with me in paradise. He had never attended Sunday school probably. Probably had never stepped foot in a Methodist church. Today you'll be with me in paradise. That's what it's about. It's about that relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Acknowledging Him as Savior. As your sacrifice. He died for the thing that we could not correct. This altar is always open. Whatever's going on in your heart or your mind, if you want to acknowledge Him for the very first time, He is your Lord and Savior. It's your opportunity. Won't you stand with us? We're going to sing 389 verses 1 and 2. this week, this week, 
remember Good Friday as my Jesus hung on that cross for me. That he died for my future sins for me. And I'm so grateful this morning that I celebrate and I serve a God that night. That I serve a God who is so awesome that I matter to him. And I thank you so much for the privilege of standing on this holy ground as we celebrate today the resurrection of the living Lord. And I thank you for this week as we gather together and, and we freely give of God's word to those around us. We celebrate so much this morning. We lift up Millie to you this coming year for her. And I'm just so grateful for for our friends, Bobby and Warren, being back with us this morning. And I'm just grateful to be alive, to stand on this holy ground, and to celebrate that I serve God so much. And I just thank you, and I honor you, and I'm so humble today, Father. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless us our name.